Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and in this video I am testing out the New Young Shuttle. The concept behind the New Young Shuttle was that every component should be recoverable and in fact in development except for the shuttle itself I'll explain in a bit. So the boosters are actually Falcon 9 boosters as they would be on the Falcon Heavy and so it is being developed and it is demonstrably supposed to be uh, recoverable, right? And in this case, we will be aiming... Uh, I'm not going to try and recover them. I'm, I'm not good at that right now. But uh, SpaceX will be. And SpaceX will be able to bring these back to Cape Canaveral itself. We'll be reserving enough fuel for that. Uh, the core is a new Glenn booster. And that is from Blue Origin. And they intend to land that on a barge. Uh, now, there have to be modifications to what they're planning in order to make it work for this. Uh, mainly that entails, of course, removing the, removing the second stage and instead replacing it with a fuel tank with a cross-feed system for the shuttle. Uh, so that is complicated. Uh, and the reason for that is balance issues, because the shuttle is going to be very heavy and needs to reserve its own fuel to complete orbit. So it can't be draining its own fuel during launch because it doesn't have enough fuel for that. So it has to uh, complete orbit with its own fuel. Therefore, it needs to draw fuel from uh, up here. Well, it doesn't really matter whether it's up here or down there, actually. Um, one other caveat, though, is that for balance issues, again, um, we need to have the reserve fuel for landing the new Glenn booster up here. And then it'll have to be somehow pumped down here for when they want to land it. Uh, and the reason is to keep the entire stack balanced. We need some weight up here. So that's a complication. All the complications are basically with the New Glenn part of all this. The shell itself, it's really fairly straightforward. It's actually um, not too different from the space shuttle, except we've got huge fuel pallets on the side here. And instead of using RS-25s, we're using two Raptor sea level engines on the tail there. So that is what we're going with. And so it's a methane oxygen setup. And, uh, of course, it's heavier than the original space shuttle because of the fuel pallets, but um, it, it's lighter overall because we're assuming, and I, that's why I use the Mark III cockpit because it's a little bit lighter than using an actual space shuttle. And we're assuming that we will have access to, you know, composite materials and more advanced materials than they had during the design of the space shuttle. And I think that's fair. Uh, of course, the heat tiles will probably be about the same. It's it's not uh, that much lighter to be cheaty. We do have a 30-ton payload in the bay. So that's our payload. is just ab gas there, 30 tons. And so that is what we are planning for, for right now. There is no uh, forward, um, what you call it, uh, docking port compartment right now. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, the OMS engines are also burning methane and oxygen. Basically, uh, they're called FRE ones, but basically think of them as uh, 20 kilonewton-ish Raptor vacuums. Basically really small um, methane oxygen engines that have really big nozzles, <laughs> basically. So, yes. Okay, I think, I think that just about does it. Let's uh, see it in action. I've tested, out, tested it out to orbit, but I haven't brought it back down. So that's going to be fun. Okay, so Jeb and Valentina. Might be overkill for this mission to have both of them, but here we are. Uh, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. Okay, off we go. There's still some balance issues to be worked out, and you'll see some of that during the launch. Engine lighting is sort of making an odd effect right now, but we'll let that be. Really, we have too much thrust on the stack side and not enough on the shuttle. 
we could do with a third shuttle engine, but then we're carrying more mass, and so I want to avoid that. But technically speaking, we probably should have a third engine on the shuttle for balance reasons. We're really cutting it close here. Now I did deliberately want to match the capabilities of the Space Shuttle and Buran. Obviously this would be easier if we were designing it for a smaller payload. Alright, so in about 15 seconds we'll be switching off four of the engines on the new Glen. For balance reasons, because we don't have the thrust taper of the SRBs on the shuttle. And throttling down, I don't have uh, it configured for engine uh, uh, this guy, engine group controller. Okay. Still really loud. Uh, four engines out on the New Glen, and you can see our pitch authority being an issue. So that's why. Now we're going to switch off the engines on the Falcon 9s and then decouple them. So they're off at 2 minutes and 30 seconds and should be able to return back to Cape Canaveral. In the hands of computers rather than me, hopefully. Okay, so we only have three engines on the new Glen now, as you can see. You can see pitch authority being maxed out, and now we shut that down and separate. I need to work on the separatrons, it needs more up front. Okay, let's uh, roll upright. Don't press zero immediately, otherwise it goes all over the place. But you can see now the shuttle internally has more than 4,700 meters per second. And that's just uh, for the Raptor sea level engines. The OMS engines have, uh, and they, uh, they use those pods there, which are uh, service module tanks. And they have about 700 meters per second with a full payload. Okay, we don't need to have too much by way of G-forces. At this point, probably limiting it to like two Gs would be reasonable. Okay, cruising right along, making orbit here. But we gotta watch out for the pitch authority. If the shuttle is carrying more cargo in the back, it'd be even worse. It'd be better off to move the cargo to the front of the shuttle, for balance reasons, than the thrust vectoring on the Raptor engines, well the the gimbling on the Raptor engines can more easily point through the center of mass. And we'll get to 400 on one side. Oops, gotta shut those down. This These engines have some weird thing going where they don't want to fully shut down. So we ended up at a pretty high apoapsis. That's fine. Um, we've shut those down and we do not intend to ever relight them. So that's good. And so RCS active and OMS active. All right. Well, let's coast to Apoapsis and circularize, then deliver our payload, then try and come back down. Maybe I'll try running the KOS script for my shell re-entries and see if that works at all. Probably ought to pack more food, water, and oxygen in here. It's only got two days worth. We also need some way of restoring electric charge. I haven't got any fuel cell in here right now. Technically we're using some residual fuel from these tanks here. We haven't even started using the actual OMS engine tanks yet. Okay, I think that's high enough. 500 by 400. Okay, so that's out of the bay, and let's pull our orbit down a bit. 
without the payload, it's got quite a lot of fuel. Actually, that's mainly because we still got fuel here. But I think it's got like a thousand meters per second uh, in the tanks of the OMS, the OMS pods themselves. With just the uh, OMS pods, it should only have 20 minutes of stage time, so it's got about 25% extra right now. But that's a nice thing, uh, if you're going to have built-in fuel for your main engines, make sure that the OMS engines use the same fuel. I'm actually going to purge the fuel from the two conformal tanks. Oh, by the way, if you don't know, uh, these are parts I made. That's, yeah. Because I wanted those kinds of parts, and they're not very well textured, they're not particularly wonderful. They're sort of blocky, if you will. But I wanted those parts, so I made those parts. So we could probably carry more than 30 tons of payload up. But now we've dumped all that. We still need to fit the fuel cells and more food, water, and oxygen for them, so... Maybe we shouldn't plan too much, but then again, those things aren't too heavy. Oh, when I throw up, it does fire the RCS first. Interesting. That That is a new thing in KSP 1.2.2, well, Realism Overall 1.2.2, where it'll fire the R... if your engines aren't settled, it'll fire the RCS first to settle them down. That's nice. reason I didn't notice until now is generally I do remember to sell the fuel down first, but I didn't that time. Well, we definitely have more fuel than we need to come back down safely. Okay, let me load in the recovery... wait, there's no KOS? Ah, oh, there's no KOS. Okay, well, cancel that idea. Yeah, amazing. Well, there's a uh, specifically aerospace, well, aircraft-oriented install, so I guess I neglected that particular thing. Okay, well, I'll have to do it manually. Okay, well, since I'd rather like to actually test... Ooh, flight camera. Ooh, it's got a bit of a problem, doesn't it? I don't want to have us run out of electric charge and inopportune time, so I will activate, well, where is it, uh, infinite electricity, so that we've got that. Okay, and shut down. Well, that's as good an approximation of what my script does as I'm going to be able to do. Uh, we're uh, over there right now. Our periapsis is over here, a little bit ahead of Cape Canaveral, and by the time we come around, hopefully we will be aimed for it. Let's enter the atmosphere. So I, I actually tried out the in X Plane 11 the whole shuttle reentry, full reentry flight, and that's uh, I'll probably do a video explaining why. But yeah, that 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 wasn't very satisfactory at all. These guys just stay lit. I mean, they're still acting like they're producing thrust and that's why the back end of this has lights on it. I haven't put any lights otherwise so I guess it's a good thing. Okay I'm gonna say we're a little bit far along so let's try and pitch up a little bit more. Well this is sort of the tedious part of all shuttle missions. If it's done right of course it's... whoa we've got issues great. I, I really need to be able to look at the map game Okay, uh, going all right. Seems to be good enough for now. We'll keep the pitch at 45, though. We're still a little bit further along, further uh, eastward than I would like at this point in our trajectory. We are already using some of our pitch authority, though. That's concerning. We gotta find out pretty soon whether we need to put more RCS thrusters, especially ones up on there and ones on the top here. These to push down there and those to push up 
to keep our pitch. We see some reddening of the cockpit and also the conformal tanks. Yeah, we'll probably need more of those RCS thrusters. These are special conformal RCS thrusters, by the way, so they have high heat tolerance. Well, our pitch authority is basically maxed out now. And what that means is we're probably going to end up going long. Because if we can't hold up our pitch, we can't get as much drag as we were, we were aiming for. And we'll get more lift. This is assuming we survive, you know, re-entry heat and everything. But so far, so good on that. Yeah, the CSS shuttle definitely consumes its delta V much faster, so we could do if oh, oh no, those are enabled. So why does it look like there's only two plumes though? That's weird. Yeah, three enabled on each side, but I only see two plumes. We are going to begin going up a bit, and that is entirely normal between 75 and 80 kilometers for the real shuttle, uh, at least with the CSS shuttle it was. So this is going pretty much like the real shuttle so far. Presumably uh, both the NASA space shuttle and Buran would react the same, they're basically the same shape. So this is a little bit of a different shape. So it's quite satisfying that it's so far going... Well, it, it shouldn't have gone past 80 kilometers though. But maybe that's because we're not pitched up enough. Vertical speed now going down. But we ended up popping up a little bit higher than usual. Despite the fact that the pitch authority is maxed out, it's doing okay though. Well, if we weren't maxing out pitch, I'd be tempted to do some S turns right now. But since basically... I don't know. I mean, to do rolls, we would need some of these thrusters to, like, turn off. And that's not currently a good thing. Okay, headed out over the Gulf of Mexico, and very much too high right now. Uh-oh, we're going up again. This was not planned. I wonder if I could... No, I tried to get it to pitch up more, and that seems to be getting it to... Well... It's just doing the best that it can. We all need to add some more thrusters. So it reddens more or less like the shuttle does, but uh, seems to be intact. With how much lift it's getting, maybe we can shorten the wings even more. We'll see about, you know, its glidability and everything. It, I did a glide test before, but... There, are, there have been some changes to it since then. Well, there's Cape Canaveral right there. We weren't uh, very far off as far as that's concerned. You can even uh, see the runway right there. Yep, uh, not too much problem as far as the north-south component of all this, but obviously the east-west bit is quite a bit off. The fact that it has a smaller wing overall means that the S-turns are also not quite as effective, so there's that. Well, I guess we'll aim for a splashdown. Oh jeez, it's going up again. Yep, uh, more thrusters, less wing. I think is the uh, message here. Oh, we've got some heating effects, so let me pitch up again. Interestingly, it seems like my thruster selection and everything is just enough to keep it at 40 degrees at when you max out the pitch. Just barely. It's sneaking up there now. 
By the way, these are actually B9 tanks. Uh, because we didn't, uh, the stock tanks uh, of this size were configured to uh, service module. And we didn't need heavy service module tanks there since we were just carrying methane and oxygen. So I used the B9 tanks instead. Made it lighter. Gotta be careful about reshaping the wing though. Of course it changes the center of lift and its relation to the center of mass. And then we have to take a look at all the Fermi aerospace derivatives. Maybe we should just aim for a lower periapsis to begin with. Instead of aiming for the same periapsis as I did with the CSS shuttle, which is about 40 kilometers, maybe this thing, we should just go like zero. That could solve the problem. A sharper trajectory down. I'd rather do that than reshape the wing and do flight testing again. Especially since it seemed to be able to tolerate the heat as far as this trajectory is concerned. Okay, I think we're safe to pitch down now. And the rest should just be aerodynamic surfaces, so let's test that by purging out our liquid methane and oxygen. Sorry for the noise. I don't know why our electric charge seemed to go down during that. I guess that ship manifest doesn't obey the infinite electricity thing. So now we have no fuel, no RCS. Mm, apparent lack of roll control? Ooh, okay, there's some wiggliness here. Maybe we should not let Smart ASS do this. Yeah, okay, it was it was Smart ASS. Also, this is a little bit worrisome noise, but uh, the G-forces are high for some horrible reason. Seems like, out of all things, I mean, it didn't give us the flame effects like during most of re-entry, but now it gives us flame effects? Okay. Whatever it says. Okay, so that was an aerodynamic instability with the airframe. It was just smart ASS being messy. So let's try the traditional pitch down 20 degrees thing. Apparently negative 20 degrees is about where we need to be if we want to maintain the same velocity. We going to be able to get slower before splashing. Oh, we're going up. Don't do that. The shuttle would have survived that. I've done that in the shuttle. What is this 592? Anyway. Yeah, the shuttle would totally have survived that. But the shuttle is like more like in one piece. Alright, well that's disappointing. But uh, we know what we, what we have to work on. And it's pretty darn close to being sort of an operational shuttle system. It just needs its re-entry trajectory fixed. And otherwise it's pretty darn good. So... Uh, on that uh, final disappointing note though, oh and let's make sure we don't have infinite, infinite electricity on. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.